So uh, we are now at the Kalis.my drive event in Setia Alam and you are looking here at the new Subaru Forester that uh, well that being drove earlier this year uh, and it's being shown here in the flash okay so right over there that is the old Forester on display as well and uh, from what I've been told this new Forester uh, available in exclusively with a 2 liter direct injection engine same engine as uh, as the new XV over there 156 PS 190 uh, 196 Newton meters of torque right as usual Subaru fashion all-wheel drive and uh, and it's the transmission is a CVT all right uh, so as you can see here this is the Subaru the famed Subaru boxer engine it sits very low in the engine bay in fact uh, if you were to look at it right the engine block okay it actually is the the engine block actually is only this high all right so of course the uh, Subaru always say the benefits of the boxer engine is that it can be mounted low so your car has a a lower center of gravity also because the pistons fire in di almost precisely opposite direction you get almost peerless uh, balance and refinement as you rev in fact my experience uh, with Subaru engines is that even the normal 2 liter and a port injection engine um, that in the car in the Impreza that used to belong to my late uncle in Canberra the the engine is so quiet on either you you need to do a double take on the rev counter just to be sure that it is it is uh, it is started all right it is that quiet now so coming back to the present this uh, this Forester I think at one look right if you look at from the front uh, you may be you may you may take a you may need a double take to to realize that hey, it's a different model but from the rear I think there's no mistaking okay they have uh, they've made very very substantial changes now just like the XV here the XV um, the XV stylistically is more is a more subtle evolution from the predecessor but it sits under an all-new platform same goes to the Forester it is an all-new generation platform underneath all right massive departure from the predecessor you can see the window lines totally different uh the rear the rear section also totally different now let's open 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 ah power opening nice now i've i've been told that there are three spec levels for this new forester okay priced at 139 149 and 159,000 ringgit the car that you see here this is the mid spec 149,000 ringgit car and uh, you've got power lifting, uh, power tailgate, and uh, you get one touch release of the of the folding seat. Okay, so let me just show you. Nice, lovely. I like this. Okay, let me just show you again. One touch tumbles down, not perfectly flat, but because this flaps here, um, it it is a, a nicely seamless loading floor, and you've got very useful for. Uh, hanging hooks here they feel very very sturdy to the touch got a 12 volt socket here and uh, let's open underneath here We've got a hidden compartment let's see what's inside here as well spare tire all right uh, we'll close this all right and uh, we'll step inside the back and uh, I'll just fold this up okay so the folding action also was very simple got an armrest here oh nice okay okay now the plastics are here to cover this area but the material looks rather good it almost reminds me of the proton x70s uh, uh cup holders but without the lid here lah, huh? so you've got uh got isofix mounts here that you've got this little velcro flap to cover the mount okay to cover the mount and um so if you want to release the seat, the folding seat from the front, all you do is pull this latch down. Okay. Oh, sorry. So you have to pull this one up. So question is, what is this for? Hmm. Right. Uh, let me sit inside. 
Okay, so leg room is good, but the uh, the thigh support is uh, surprisingly for me very very average. If you ask me, here you've got uh, here you've got a two USB ports, nice and covered by flap. Rear air con vents here. This is a, a big improvement from the predecessor. And who I've never seen this before. Double pockets, triple pockets actually. So this is one pocket. This is separate. All right, uh, leg room is good, but yeah, the uh, thigh support really could be improved. 170 cm tall, pretty decent uh, headroom up here. Let me just put this up to the back. Seats offer good lean angle. Oh, okay, I get this. Now this this strap here is for level adjustment, uh, for recline adjustment. So, okay, so I, I got this. I get this level of uh, uh, recline for long distance driving okay. not bad two step uh, recline adjustment now let's go to the front and here we have a very now in terms of design and uh, finishing the cabin okay it looks a bit on the monotonous side it also does not look as modern or as sophisticated as some of the other uh, uh, competitors in the segment but it feels solid all right everything here feels solid uh, the mechanisms here feel all properly engineered you know like we always I always say this about Subaru um, they don't spend that much in in terms of appearance but what they do spend their money on really are the things that hold the car together are things behind the scenes all right that you know, you don't see it in the showroom, but you feel it when you drive. So, what I can tell from touching all these panels is that I can feel that this car, this is a car that is very, very solidly put together, all right? All these mechanisms feel very pleasant, okay? The, the, air, the air con switch gears, fantastic. Okay, wait, how do I off this? On, off, all right? Yeah, all these all these knobs here feel nice to the touch. It's just that the design is a bit uh, not very very inspiring. Okay, but the solidity of this cabin is absolutely beyond question, if you ask me. So this this knob here also feels nice to the touch. Okay, uh, the instrument cluster. Yeah, uh, this takes a bit of uh, of getting used to, but you've got two clear dials here. And a single center screen this is typical subaru very very functional if only i can figure out how to operate that screen okay let me just see where oh, okay i think it's probably somewhere here on the steering wheel let me see how do you use it okay so here you have um the power tailgate release here and I am still trying to figure out how do you cycle between those menus there ah, okay so you have press this info button and the display there changes I would, at least I must say the uh, the resolution of the screen looks pretty decent this however this has a bit of a last decade feel I mean this has an aftermarket look to it um, yeah the response time also is okay all right but then again this is that is an area that typically is Subaru's weak point it's something that you know recognizing Subaru's competence in its mechanical engineering you are just inclined to forgive that Forgive all that and and still admire this car for the engineering integrity underneath. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm going to leave this car here for now, and uh, I'll probably go and check out the uh, the demonstrations outside. All right. So over here is a demo for for the new Forester's uh, Subaru Eyesight system. So one customer just hopped in. I'm just going to walk right to the end okay so they're gonna do this so right over there i understand there's a drift show over there and uh 
So that car is uh, is getting ready there. We'll come over to the end. So there they've got that board there to trigger the Subaru EyeSight auto braking system. Now, uh, to recap for you guys, Subaru's EyeSight system utilizes two stereoscopic cameras. So basically, it functions like the human eye. Okay, so two cameras looks in front and they come and the system compares the images between the left camera and right camera to triangulate the distance between your car and the and the object in front ah, they haven't moved yet ah. okay so that forester over there is on the move okay i'm not sure if the uh if the microphone captured it but we could hear the sound of the car uh, cars break the the, the 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 servo autonomously applying braking force to stop the car this distance away from the obstacle okay guys so wait, okay, uh, okay guys so one of the uh, big improvements with this new Forester is that it has a uh, eyesight and as I explained earlier the eyesight operates on two cameras like our human eye so left camera right camera sees in front up to a range of 110 meters ahead of this car and it it would using that it it judges whether you will hit the vehicle in front or not and will then automatically apply brakes if necessary so right now i'm approaching that that uh that obstacle there my legs are off ah okay the car stopped itself now, um, so just now it was a relatively medium speed. Okay. Now let's try. This is the this is some this is a scenario that we always gonna during traffic jam. So we are rolling forward, right? And then uh, phone phone ring. Then suddenly we go and look at our phone. Do, 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 do. Oh, we didn't see. Oh, bang! We have hit the hit the car ahead. Eyesight stopped you from the collision. Now just now you notice that that very annoying buzzing sound. It is to meant to snap you back into attention. So just now, it was only after I stepped on the brakes that the annoying sound uh, went away. Now the other thing, uh, the other thing that I was I was introduced to was that this has um, throttle mismanagement pre-collision throttle management. Ah, uh, pre-collision throttle management system. So let's say like right now you are in a parking lot. You are supposed to reverse out of this, but you accidentally put into drive you step on the throttle you hear that beep sound that beep warns you that there is something in front to step on the brakes okay so uh subaru eyesight okay it was uh it was it was uh introduced to me covers pre-collision frontal pre-collision warning uh coll autonomous emergency braking throttle mismanagement what uh... adaptive cruise control First is pre-collision braking system. Yeah. Pre-collision throttle management. Yep. Adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control. Lead vehicle start alert. Lane departure warning and lane sway warning. Now lane departure warning and lane sway warning we can't try it here lah. But uh, the front vehicle departure alert is similar to what we shown some months back in the Pro Duo Mai where you know where the car where let's say you're in the traffic jam you're playing with your phone and then the car in front move away you cannot hold it. It this this the this system warns you that the car in front departed before the motorist behind horn you. Okay. All right. Okay. 